Hey, what's up? Welcome back to uh, this new video. This one is paper 33 of May June 2002. Now, with that being said, obviously, let's move on to the questions we have for you today. Now, let's move on to question number one. So here we have to find in terms of A, so don't forget that, the set of values of X satisfying this equation. Now, you can see clearly we have modulus on both sides and we have X on both sides. In this case, we just square both sides. You will have four here. And that will become 3x plus a square less than 2x plus 3a square. Now simplify, you will have what? 4 is 4, that should be 9x square plus 6ax plus a square less than 4x square plus 2 times this times this, that should be 12 a x and plus 9a squared. Now we have to expand this one first. Let's see what happens. You have 36x squared plus 24ax and plus 4a squared. Less than 4x squared plus 12ax and plus 9a squared. The same thing, right? Now the thing is really, it's kind of annoying to be honest. There's so much to write. Now send everything this every everything over here to this side, we can simplify. 36 minus 4, that should be what? 32. 24 minus 12, that should be plus 12. 4 minus 9 should be minus 5a squared. Now once we have this quadratic equation, we have to find the critical values of this equation. So take the same, take the same thing. And then we just have to equate that equation to the value of 0 to find the critical values. Now factorize. Now for this kind of question, you can solve by factorization or by using your formula. It's, it's your choice. You can take your time with this factorization or use your formula directly to find the values of x. x here will be. Now 32 could be what? Well, we can try. Again, factorization, usually we do by trial. We have to try and see which one works, which one doesn't work, and then we find our answer in the end. So 32 is 8 times 4, and 5 is simply 5 times 1. Here we need to have plus 12, so let's think. I'll place 5 here, 5a, and 1a over here. So we also have to write a because of the a square in the back, so we have also to write this one and this one. Now to get plus 12, we have to have plus 20 minus so again, we multiply this by this, so minus 8 plus 20 will be plus 12, so good to go. Now, once again, if you don't know how to factorize, just use your formula to find the values of x. And x will be the value of minus 5a over 8. x will be the value of a over 4. Now finally, we have to draw the number line to help us to find the values of x, so 1 by 1. This is minus 5a over 8, and this is the value of 1 over 4a. Now obviously, we can see that the equation here is a minimum curve because the coefficient is plus 1, plus 32. That should be something like this. The shape will be something like this. Fair enough. And from what I can see, I need this curve to be below 0, so below will be below. So therefore, x have to be the value between minus 5, this one over 8, and then 1 over 4a. And this is your answer for question number 1. Now let's move on to question number 2. So we have to solve the equation of cos theta minus 60 equal to 3 sine theta for theta between 0 and 360. So one by one, let's first expand this whole thing. So we should know cos of a minus b is what? It is cos of a times cos of b plus sine of a times sine of b. So similarly, here we have cos of theta minus 60. That will be cos of theta, cos of 60, plus sine of theta and sine of 60. Of course, uh, for the angle of value 60, 30, 45, usually, or their multiples will be exact values. We should know this. This will be 1 over 2. This will be root 3 over 2. If you don't know, obviously use your calculator, you will also find your answer as well for these angles. 
Now uh, let's try to simplify. You will have this over here will become half cos theta plus root 3 over 2 sine theta e is equal to 3 sine theta. Now we can send this over here. Let's see what happens. Uh, or this over here. No big deal. Send this over here. So we have 1 over 2 cos theta is equal to 3 sine theta minus root 3 over 2 sine theta. Now become uh, factorize. That will be 3 minus root 3 over 2 sine theta as the common factor. Now we have, as you can see, we have cos theta on one side and sine theta on one side. So what can we do? We can divide everyone by cos theta. You will have half over here. That will become 3 minus root 3 over 2. Now sine divided by cos will be 10. There you go. So finally, to find the value of tan theta, that will be 1 over 2 divided by 3 minus root 3 over 2. So let's find out what is the value of that. That should be 0 0.5 divided by 3 minus root 3. So let me uh, let me write this in an easier way. So because I, I sometimes, you know, some mistakes may happen on the calculation side, but let's try our best to not to not make these kind of silly mistakes. So he divided by 2, 3 minus answer. Here you go. Half divided by answer. So you will have 0 0.2343. Again, take your time, try to solve this. Um, my idea was just to let me find the base first, and then take this one, divide by this one. So finally, as you can see, tan is a positive value. All right, it is a positive value. Now, as you should know, ASTC should be in the first quadrant, but also in the third quadrant. First will be simply your value theta, and this will be 180 plus theta. So now, so now because it is positive value over here, theta could be found directly, tan inverse of this value. Let's see what we get. So here we have to use degrees, tan inverse of answer. That should be 13.2 degrees. And it should be also 180 plus 13.2, that should be 193.2 degrees for the two values of, of theta. Let's check again, 10 inverse of 0 0.2343. Yep, seems to be fine. So in this case, we found the two values of theta, satisfying the equation between 0 and 360 for this one. I think the main part here is just to know we have to break this down and then simplify one by one. And whenever we have an equation in terms of cos and sine, when they're not together, they are separate. As you can see, we can divide by cos everywhere to get tan. And then simplify one by one to solve this. This is your question number two. Now let's move on to question number three. So here we have to show the equation, this one, is this one, can be written as a quadratic equation in terms of ln of x, in x, sorry. So one by one, let's try to simplify this. So you can send all the logs to one side. You have log, this one, 2x plus 1, minus 2, log base of 3x minus 1 is equal to 1. Fair enough. Now, we should know we can send this one on top, right, as a power. And then when we have minus, and because these two are the same log with the same base, we can combine them together. Log to the base of 3. Now we have 2x plus 1. Minus become divide of this one, which is x minus 1. And here we have the power now. That will be 2 is equal to 1. Now a few things we should know here is when you have log to the base of 3, let's say we have x here equal to a. To find the value of x, which is the inside value, we have to send the base over here. So x will be... 3 power a. So similarly, to find the value of the inside, which is this one, that will become 2x plus 1 over the value of x minus 1 square. Send the base over here become 3 power 1. So now we should be able to cross multiply and see what happens. You will have 2x plus 1 is equal to 3 x minus 1 square. Expand, let's see what happens. So let me uh, expand this on the side. You will have 3 times x minus 1 square, which is 3, x square minus 2x plus 1. 
which is the value of 3x squared minus 6x plus 3, 2x plus 1. Now simplify, and everything to one side, you will have 3x squared minus 6 minus, it should be minus 8, and then 3 minus 1 should be plus 2 is 0. So as shown, as required, we have shown that it can be written as a quadratic equation in terms of x, done. Now for part b, hence we have to solve this equation, uh, giving you answers in two decimal places. Okay, so hence, meaning using part 1. Now by observation here, what do we have? So part 1 we had this, log, same base, we had 2x plus 1 is equal to 1 plus 2 log, same base, x minus 1. Now the only difference might be, as you can see, this and this are not the same. I mean, it's not really 2 here, we have 4y. So let's see what can we change. So basically what happened was 2x plus 1 became 4y plus 1. Cancel, cancel. So 4y is a value of 2x. Divide by 2, you will have 2y is a value of x. So basically, the idea is we have to use the substitution of x equal to 2y in the equation. Right. So right now my equation my equation is what it is. 3, this one, minus this one, plus 2 is 0. Let me find the value of x. So x will be uh, minus b plus minus root of b squared minus 4ac. That will be 64 minus 4 times a times c. That will be 40. And this whole thing divided by 2a, which is 6, right? So x will be the value of 8 minus root of 40 divided by 6, 0 0.2792. Otherwise, 8 plus root of 40 divided by 6, 2.387. Let's try again. So 8 minus root of 40 divided by 6, is this one, and we have this one for the two values of x. Now finally, we have to replace here, right? So again, if x is this, y will be the value of 0 0.2792 divided by 2, or 2.387 divided by 2. So let's check. 0 0.2792 divided by 2, that should be 0 0.14 to two decimal place, and this one is 2.387 divided by 2, 1.192 to decimal place. Now we have to choose which one is, is the correct one, obviously. Now, by observation, we can see this is not good. Why? The reason is because if you were to have this value of y, 2 times y minus 1 will be what? That will be 2 times 0 0.14 minus 1 is minus. 0 0.72. Now we should know log cannot take negative values. This is why it will not be a good value for y. So this one is the only one you will have, which is y is equal to 1.19 for the value of y for part b. Again, using part 1 to solve this. This is your question number 3. The description below and click on this link to access the Patreon page for the full video. With that being said, good luck and thank you for watching.